Hi, my name's Mary Hoffman, and I'm a business solutions consultant for Synergy Resources. I've been asked to make a recording to give you an overview of accounting within visual, um, within visual enterprise. As you can see from the chart here, visual is a full end to end enterprise solution, and that includes the financial and accounting aspects. So today we're going to go over um, a few of those areas. We'll, we'll look here under ledger at how accounts are set up and how I might run financial um, reports or um, do some general journal entries. Uh, we might point at things like budgets, but we definitely want to hit on accounts receivable and how those um, billing events that are happening, such as shipping, such as milestone billing, are leading me to invoicing and um, cash applications. And we'll also take a look at payables and uh, see how those purchasing and receiving activities lead to a vendor invoice and how we can get those payments made, scheduled and, and, and made. Um, We'll look at that at a minimum. I hope to also have a quick peek at, um, at cash management, cash flow projections, and how that works. Now, uh, to, to approach this, um, let's put on our hat as, a, as an accountant, as someone working in accounts payable, accounts receivable, or um, uh, you know, a CFO controller, something like that. They might, like all other users within Visual, they might choose to rather than work from reports that they're running here um, to daily start from their dashboard and so let's do that let's drill into dashboards so dashboards um, just like any other user are going to be very specific to the role that i'm in so for example and you know and as an individual i might wear multiple hats so i might need um, I might need analytics on my dashboard that come from different areas. This one happens to all be relatively financial based, although um, some of this has to do with, with uh, payables and vendors and sales and, um, and, and customers and days outstanding here in my orders. Here's a balance sheet. So um, the point is, you can have whatever you would like on your dashboard. It needs to be, it might be tasks that you have open. It might be uh, things you need to remember to do. Uh, so these can be actionable. They can be informational. Uh, informational. Um, but let's take a look at how I might choose to, to use a dashboard and, and drill in and get additional information. And then we'll look at how I might very quickly at how I might build a dashboard or a new report to put on my dashboard. So let's just start with a balance sheet here. Oh, uh, maybe what I wanna do is drill in and look closer at that inventory number. So let's do that. So I'll drill in. Now I'm seeing all, notice the buildup here. So I have, I have um, posted level accounts that lead up to summary accounts and I can go look at the details of, of just any of those. Maybe I wanna look closer at this material inventory account and go look at what has led to the transactions in that particular account. So here I'm seeing in this account that there are transactions that are coming to this account and affecting this account in this period of time from lots of different places. It's an inventory account. There are, there are purchases and receipts being made there are issuances and re, uh, to WIP and receipts from WIP to finished goods happening. There are sales happening as well. Um, there, there could be adjustments, inventory adjustments from cycle counts or from, from that physical inventory. So um, many types of, um, of entries happen to be hitting the GL at, uh, for, this, um, for this inventory account. Here I can see who posted it, by user, I can drill further into each of those um, into each of those entries if need be. Um, just keep drilling, following your train of thought until you get to the answers you're looking for. Including here, I am looking at a summary of this purchase order. In this case, I drilled into a purchase ledger, had lots of transactions. I drilled into one transaction. Now I'm looking at 
a summary of that purchase order, the items that were on that purchase order, if you care for that detail, or if you need to go straight into how that purchase order was actually entered. Now we're looking right at a purchase order entry screen. And I can see from here just the full story. If there were approvals, if, um, if there had been receipts, let's go check that out. Let's go see what's happened with this particular item. Through the document life cycle here, now I'm able to see that, yeah, this purchase order um, was created to satisfy a need from a work order, from a project, from a work order. Uh, it was received. And yes, it's been invoiced. I have yet to pay it or I would see a payment amount as well, payment information. From here, I can drill into any of those things. If I want to go look at the receiver, I'm, uh, if I want to go look at the purchase order, any notes and collaboration around any of those things, I'm able to, to do as well. So the point with the, with the dashboards is to put the information on your dashboard that is important to you and drill to as much detail as you need to get your answers and to or to take the actions that you need to. So the next question might be is, well, how difficult is it to get these dashboard items? So let's let's just make a quick report. From the tool set here, I can decide if what I'm making is a report, a graph, a, a new dashboard, a packet of reports. We're going to make a simple report, create a report. Now, I'm going to use a, um, a tool called a wizard. Can't get any easier than that. We're going to use a wizard to create a new, um, a new type of report. So what kind of report do I want to make? Do I want to make a balance sheet, an income statement, trial balance? What is it that I'd like to make? We'll make a balance sheet. And... Um, and the wizard will just walk us right through that. So what's the next step? Do I want a different description for my description column? Um, what are my asset accounts? So I'll just drill in and it will now show me my chart of accounts. Oh, let's move that where we can see it. And let's go find, it's asking us for our asset account range. So we'll just select those assets. So I want it from there, from here, from this account to, let me scooch that over there, to the end of my assets, which depending on how you have your chart of accounts set up, you know, they may be um, in, in a sequence or I can pick from individual accounts as you can see here. So, and then I can also see if I missed any, um, if, if need be. We'll go to next and we'll choose our liability accounts. My liability accounts start here. Go to 1200. Through. Here and next, it's going to ask me about equity. Total equity. From here to where. And if you know them, you can just type them in. You're probably very familiar with your chart of accounts. Just type them in instead of me who's doing the searching. How do I want to see that? Well, I'm, I want to see it by month. And, you know, I could continue to, to go on, but we're going to say by month. And then we're, we'll finish this very quick report. And then I'm going to run it. And let's just see what we get. No promises, but let's just see what we get here. I'm going to run it um, where I know I've got a little bit of demo data here. So there's just quick, quick balance sheet, um, but that the information that we were seeing, all drillable, just like you saw me do before. So now I'm drilling into that inventory, 
drilling down to those batches and further and further and further. If this is a report that I want to have on my dashboard or if I want to schedule it to run uh, every so often and uh, publish it, that's also possible. So I can simply um, choose to, to uh, go out of the run. Once I like this report, I would choose to save it, give it a name, and, um, and pull it onto my dashboard if I want it to be on my dashboard. Another thing that I'm able to do is, um, is to make comparative selections. So, um, so for example, maybe I want not only to see this month, but I also want to create what we call dynamic columns and be able to see um, back in time for the last six months, for example, or I'll make it really simple and we'll just do a couple of months. So I want to look at two this month and last month, um, back into the back and save that. So now it, this green is telling me it's a dynamic column. And when I rerun this for today, I'm, I'm going to see not only numbers for this month, but also for last month. I'll go in and change titles, and I'll have the report that I want, not only for this year, but for last year. So those comparatives can be um, you know, any way that you want them to be. So quick and easy to make reports. Put them on your dashboard. Uh, if or leave them as reports. Reports can be run individually as well. They don't have to be on, on a dashboard. That's a quick look into dashboards, creating dashboards. Now let's go a little further into, um, into, into accounting, AR, AP, et cetera. Um, and at, like we did before, we can do that right here from the dashboard if we choose to. You know, maybe we want to go look at AR, similar um, similar to AP. To do that, we'll just use the backlog here. That, that would be a pretty good test. We'll drill into the, um, the backlog that's made up, uh, that makes up this blue part of the, this bar here. Let's drill to those orders. And we'll drill into a single one of those orders. Summary information, just like we saw before, some more summary information on lines. But if we want to, we drill right through and to that, now we're seeing how that order was created. So, so if we think about um, the AR flow from uh, quote to cash, let's say, we, we're able to see how this order might have followed that through the document lifecycle. So here, this um, order started as a quote, turned to a sales order. There were three work orders created to satisfy that sales order. All of this, of course, is on the operational side, but then we shipped something, which in this case triggered an invoice and a payment, and unfortunately, there's also been, been an RMA. Point again being that I started from a, from a dashboard and drilled to, into as much detail as I needed to get to. Um, if I want to jump right over to that packing list or need for whatever reason to look back and see how it was quoted, before I cut that invoice, um, I'm able to do that All, anywhere along this, this line. So let's go, um, let's go put on our hat as an AP clerk and uh, see what my day looks like. So purchasing has been getting signals and cutting purchase orders and receiving has been opening boxes and processing those receipts with against those purchase orders right in the system. Um, I, being an AP person, I'm part of what I'm doing is opening the mail and getting the or emails or however they're coming at me, getting those vendor invoices. So the place that I record those is here in invoice entry, payables invoice entry. So I open the mail, I see who has sent me an invoice, and I put in their name. Now, I could eat, I could look up their name. I could put in part of their name and it would bring me a filtered list to match what I put in. Um, but we'll just select this vendor. And um, now, I could start to fill in information, such as um, invoice number. What is the number that is on that invoice? How much is it for? Um, however, I can also take that, make that entry a lot easier and go, go match that up to any receipts 
This is the one and only receipt for this vendor that has not yet been invoiced. It's been received, but not invoiced. So that's the one we're going to take here. And now notice it filled in certain information for me. So if this, is, if this information is correct, great. If I need to make changes, for example, add freight, um, maybe the, the amount was different, the invoiced amount was different, and if I'm allowing for that, I can make changes and determine where that overage or underage, overage or underage, the overage or that under amount goes um, from, a, from an account standpoint. But what's going to happen is this is going to relieve that purchase receiving accrual account and, um, and the offsetting entry will be to my AP account. So let's go ahead and save this. And now it will be ready for payment scheduling, for getting that scheduled. So to create payments and do that payment scheduling, I can either go right back up there to the top and go into payables and go to payment scheduling, but I also have shortcuts right here on this screen. So if I just want to create a payment um, and go create my payments now, I'll just hit that shortcut. And um, notice that the one that we have just put in there is already marked to pay. Now, if I'm doing a check run, um, I will probably, I'll, I'll change this date to, you know, show me everything that's due by a certain date. It's going to uh, consider that based on terms and based on what, um, you know, what that pay date is, et cetera, and automatically mark them as pay. But then I can always unmark um, by changing it to hold. Notice now it's gone there. Uh, I might choose to pay more. You know, maybe I want to um, pay, oh, everything. It will sort by due date, pay date. It already is sorted by pay date. And maybe I want to pay everybody from here to here and mark them all as pay status or mark them and then take some off. You know how this gets done. So we're going to stick to just the one that we have there to, to pay and we'll, um, we'll go process that payment. And um, no, oh, I probably should point out that there are some things I can do here as far as print that, um, you know, print a report, print what that means for cash requirements, um, send it over to Excel like I can, you know, just everywhere in the system, um, you know, so that if it needs to be looked at further or um, needs, you know, maybe I want to pass that on to someone, I want to do some additional calculations, whatever that might be before processing payment. But that's our next step. Let's go cut check. Well, in this case, one check. So uh, again, I could go, I could be doing that straight from this menu or while we're here, we'll just hit shortcut, making it easy to use to do that payment generation. What I want to do, I want to generate payments. Which bank am I paying from? Um, you know, what, what am I paying? Take all the discounts, whatever I might choose for just those manual payments. And away we What is that check like? Um, we'll just have a, a one stub on the top. Um, so, you know, lots of, lots of uh, options here. Print samples of those checks. What's my starting check number? And once again, away we go. And there's a lovely example of, our, of, a, of a check. This, um, each of these forms is designed by you. So uh, if you have laser checks, this is, this is looking for a pre-printed check. Um, but if you wanted to print that on, on check stock, um, you know, you load in those pre-printed checks and, and it will fill out for you. Um, and you set up this form during implementation. I'm asked to confirm that those checks printed correctly. I say OK, and we're, we're all good to go. And let's, let's see what we just did there. So I'll, I'll cancel out of some of this, close down some windows. And um, right back here, we haven't even left this invoice entry screen. It's still right there for us. But let's go see what now what that has done with our um, with our uh, document lifecycle that we've been seeing throughout. 
So sure enough, we, we had a purchase order and a receipt that had, was done previously. But we created um, and we received that vendor invoice and vouchered it. And then we have now paid for that. And notice there's some other indicators going on. We, this is fully, re the PO is closed. There's a line across the top. That's a completion meter. It's been fully received. That receipt has been fully invoiced and that invoice has been fully paid. So that's the AP cycle. Now let's walk through an AR cycle. So again, just for a little backstory before we get to the AR cycle, um, you know, customer orders are being quoted, estimated. Eventually, uh, hopefully, we get the business and um, and that those customer orders have been placed. At some point, they get shipped, and um, and either a milestone billing effect uh, um, event has triggered the need for an invoice or that shipment can of course trigger the need for an invoice or I could have created an invoice as a prepayment to an order. All of those things can create an invoice. Let's look at a traditional customer order, gets shipped, um, gets invoiced, and then the cash application for that. So let's start with that customer order and we'll, we'll drill into sales orders here. Let me just do that from here. Sales order opens up. We'll just pull up a open, um, an open order, uh, one that I'm familiar with here. And let's just double check and see where we are on that order right now. So right now that order is in stock, ready to be shipped, but has not yet shipped. All we have in the document lifecycle is, uh, is the order itself. So, so let's go ahead and ship that. Now that's probably done by the shipping department. Um, they may print a, print a list of everything that is to ship and then um, create these packing lists, but I just went straight to that order and we'll create a packing list from it. So now that um, is shipped. Oh, that order um, ha is the goods are allocated to someone else. So hold on and I'll go release those goods and come right Okay, I um, took care of that allocation issue, and then and now here we have our, our packing list. And we can see there in the background, um, not only was it a taxable item, but um, that, you know, that we've, we've shipped it. We've got that packing list now in place. And again, that's something that's gonna go with the goods. Shipping department probably has taken care of that. Looking back at our sales order in that document life cycle, I can see that, yep, now we have a packing list for this. Well, next step is invoicing that AR invoice and getting that sent off to the to the customer. So accounting um, can be notified in many ways that there's been shipments. Often it's just a matter of course to come to um, printing those invoice forms and specifying how I want those printed. Um, maybe I want those, uh, you know, maybe I want to combine all packing lists for a single customer for that day. Um, onto one invoice. Maybe I want separate invoices. So you make a decision how you want that to happen. You can print one invoice or, or everything that's been shipped or ready to invoice um, up to, you know, up to now. So the next step is just to, to actually process those. So let's go do that. Um, I'll point out a few other things here, you know, print one invoice. Uh, print duplicate invoices if you need to, and you can see some of the other uh, uh, options that are here, emailing, etc. So we'll we'll go ahead and print that so that you can see it. Here's an exam another example of a form. Um, the check was the first one that you saw that we wrote to our uh, to the to the vendors. As you can see, you can make those look you know any way you want. These invoices happen to be on plain paper or if they were emailed, PDF, um, if that's how you'd like that to go. And, um, and that notification, by the way, can happen automatically to your, to your vendors. You don't have to, um, or to your customers and to your vendors, by the way. Uh, you don't have to um, email that directly. It could automatically happen when there's a shipment. They can automatically be notified um, and, um, and more. I mean, we can talk about that. At, at a later date. So here's an example of the of that invoice. 
going to my customer. If we just to keep on following through, we'll say, yep, yeah, I looked that up. Good, yes, those are, uh, there was no misprinting, and yep, yeah, those, are, those are good. So now those are committed. And going, just to go full circle, we'll come back to that customer order and once again, look at, well, we could do it from here. You know, we'll um, look at that document lifecycle that we've been watching all the way along. And now, you know, not only is the sales order fully shipped, that packing list is fully invoiced. And, um, and then when we process payment, we're gonna, see, we're gonna see that payment too. So that's our next step. And I meant take a payment, receive a payment. So to our AR menu, we're gonna go to um, cash application. So we, so now we're wearing the hat that we've opened the mail. We have checks that have come in, um, or we're receiving, we're you know marking down that we've received the, the check, or that we've received payment notification from the bank. Um, who was the who was the customer? Look them up. Here are all of their outstanding um, transactions, and this one happens to be the one that we um, that we just processed. So we'll specify that. Um, that yeah we we received a payment their check number or their ID number was such when did we get it um, and more information and here's where we're applying that so if it was a larger check we could apply to multiples apply credits etc so we'll go ahead and save that it'll fall off their list and we're we're on to the you know we are we have now processed that payment now, just to continue to go full circle, right here from the invoice, um, I can also, of course, do that document life cycle uh, and be able to see how that fed back, all the way back to that customer order. So we took that customer order, shipped it, invoiced it, and now it's paid. Anywhere along this line, I can see this document life cycle. This time we came at it from the from the, um, right from that invoice application, where before we've been looking at it from the, right from the customer order, um, right from this screen and gone to, but it's always under info document lifecycle to get to that exact same information. So now back at our customer order, we can see what that status is as well. Now let's go ahead and close some of this down and um, let's move on to cash and see what happened. So we, we paid a vendor, we, um, Receive some cash. Let's just go look at our cash book, which is your, which is where you do bank reconciliation. Which bank? Um, what has happened? What has been reconciled? So here we can easily see that that um, that cash deposit that we took, the vendor, or I'm sorry, the customer payment, and that then the customer cash application and the vendor payment that we did earlier. So it's here. It's ready to be managed in the bank book. Um, while we're here, I wanted to also show you cash management just very quickly. In the cash management window, I'm able to see what my cash flow projections are. Um, this takes into consideration everything the system already knows about what's going on, what customer orders are open, um, what invoice AR invoices are outstanding when they're due. Um, what uh, purchase orders are open, so what those cash requirements will be, what AP is already, um, has already been posted but yet not yet paid. So it's aware of all of those things and is bringing that information into this, um, into this screen for us so that I can see uh, not only what my actuals have been um, and what's currently open, but also projections so, um, and not, let, to get a better feel for that, we know that the system knows about AR invoices that, are, that, that have been created, so, that have not yet been paid. So here, I can update those projections, and, um, and I can do that in a variety of ways. Do I expect my customers to pay those invoices on time? Or would I rather look at how they've paid over the past X number of times that they've paid invoices and consider that time frame as my when I'll be receiving that cash? So I have the option to, to make some changes here. Um, it will not only look at those outstanding receivables, 
but it will, can also look at what it knows about customer orders that are, that are open and yet to ship. So those shipments will turn into, uh, can turn into invoices. So if I wanna consider those customer orders in my projected cash, then great, this checkbox will be checked. And then I have to say, all right, am I gonna ship on time? So if, or do I want to consider how I've been shipping, what my, what my um, performance has been on shipping on time over the last several shipments to these customers? So, um, so you know, I'm, I'm taking a more realistic view if, if it's applicable to you. Let's look at the AP side. So on payments, yep, open AP. Do I, I, do I expect that I am going to pay on time? Or what if I pay everybody in a certain number of days, maybe when I get a bank draw or um, pay terms plus, you know, I've been running a little bit late. So, um, so I can do that. Same with purchase orders. So these are not yet received, but are due to be received. Do I expect them, do I want to consider my cash projection, that my need for cash, that cash requirement um, based on how I've been, um, those being received on time or again with samples. So I can update those um, and take that into consideration. I can also add things in that the system doesn't know about. So it definitely knows about those things we just talked about, POs and open AP, open AR and customer orders but it might not know about the fact that we're about to buy a new machine and I haven't yet put the purchase order in or that we're adding on to a building and I haven't started to, to um, put that kind of information into the system yet for the, for the service goods and services that are going to be required in that project. So I can add things in here that are um, without the system, um, without them coming in automatically. So I can add those in so I can get that full picture down here at the bottom of what my cash flow looks like over time. And if I want to see that graphically, then I absolutely can. Of course, anything upside down is not a good thing. So, um, you know, I'm sure your cash flow projections would be better than mine. Um, so I wanted to show you, give you a quick look at, the, at that um, cash flow cash management window is what we call that. Um, last thing, uh, let's, and we'll only take a few minutes here, but let's go look at how this starts, how it comes together, and some of the things that I can do right here from this ledger menu. Of course, I can create um, general journal entries and such, but let's look at the beginning of that with, with um, how I set up my chart of accounts. And that all starts here in the accounting window. So this is where initially that uh, chart of accounts is set up, or if you need to make changes to, to your chart of accounts, you'll add new accounts here. Um, let's go look at the chart of accounts. Now, we'll, I'll pick on something common, like, oh, well, we'll, we'll stick with the, the inventory theme we've been following, and I'll um, pull up a particular account. Now, let's look at uh, some of what's set up here. How is this? What kind of account is this? Is it an asset, liability, et cetera? Um, is it a summary account or is it a posted level account? Um, does, and when I, when I drill into what I'm seeing now at the bottom, oh, I probably should point out one other thing. Um, I can also have budgets, uh, you know, I can have multiple budgets for, and we're not gonna go into budgets in this overview, but just know that you can have budgets and be um, seeing how you're performing to budget all the way through. Um, but down here at the bottom, this is a running trial balance. So here I can see that I've had some activity um, in April. Uh, you know, there, there was my balance in March, my balance in April. Let's drill into April. This is showing me that this, uh, you know, this told me it was a summary account. Well, these three accounts are summarizing to our particular account. And this account summarizes up to another account. So posted level accounts up to summary accounts, up to even more summarized accounts, um, you know, if need be. Let's drill into a, a more detailed level um, at one of these. We'll just stick with, with, stick with inventory. So now I'm looking at that posted level account of inventory, a particular inventory asset account. And again, I do have some activity there in April. So let's drill into April and see what kind of activity. So that activity is, um, you know, being inventory. Some of the things we talked about before, there's been some adjustments, some purchases. 
um, some manufacturing transactions, finished goods. Let's drill into purchasing for a second. So here I can see the transactions that are making up the activity in this account. There was a purchase order. We bought goods to this account, directly to this account. Drilling further, I can even see all sides of that transaction, not just not just this inventory side, but as I received that, you know, I had um, received not invoiced um, account that that um, that that was off, you know, was offset to, uh, along with some other transactions that happened. So, um, drilling in even deeper, I'm going right down to those POs. What POs made up that, um, you know, that level of or or that particular transaction? So from an accounting perspective, I'm drilling clear to the details, just like you've seen me do in so many. Let's go look at a different kind of entry. Um, that was purchases. Let's go look at, oh, let's go back and, and say I want to know more about that WIP, um, WIP transaction. You know, here is the very work order that, um, that, this was, that this is responsible for this transaction. Again, all sides of that, that transaction. Are right here and uh, you know just get to as much detail as I want to now I'm looking at the very entries into that work order there's labor entries there are material entries and you know drill to all the detail that you need in order to do the um, do the investigation evaluation um, that you may be looking into and um, and and I could go on you know drill into the drill drill into finished goods and and more and sales, for example. So we'll come back out and just to um, just to summarize, you know, we took a very quick look at some of the features within within the financials here in Visual. Um, start start with um, dashboards. Drill into as much detail as you need to. Use those dashboards to bring you information um, to put to bring put information right in front of you every morning uh, or as often as you need to drill into as much detail as you need to get to um, from those transactions they're built into visual are also those system-wide features of workflow and alerts and messaging that um, and automatic notifications that that will happen as well um, not just in the financial areas but all throughout the system